Bibles, please, to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Pardon me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Amen. And it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are now new. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. That word new creation actually means unheard of before. How many know that you are a creature in Christ that has been unheard of before? Now, that's not where our focus is going to be. The good news is that you get an absolute fresh start in your life. How many believe that you almost need a do-over from time to time? You know, His mercies are new every morning. Now, and I've said this before, you'd think I was awful rich if I drove a brand new car every morning. You'd think, Pastor Carl... You've got unlimited resources of finances because you've got a brand new car every morning. Well, how many know every single morning you get a brand new dose of God's mercy? Amen. Amen. Brand new. Brand new. Unheard of before. Brand new. It doesn't matter what happened last night. That doesn't give you a license to do whatever you want. But the good news is when you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, His mercies are now new every single morning. But the one thing I want us to catch here is in verse 18 it says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Therefore, he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. You need to really catch this. Number one, he has reconciled us to himself. Now that's talking to the unbelieving church first. Okay? You've got to understand, in order to be a new creation in Christ, you've got to understand the only way you could ever tap into that is based on the work of, of Jesus on the cross. So he has reconciled the world to himself once and for all. Now, you say, Pastor, what does that mean? That means that the world needs to simply receive the free gift. That's why the free gift of salvation is the free gift of salvation. Get that? It's not something that you try and do. It's something that you receive. If I had a $20 bill to hand to Pat today, and I had it in my hand, and I was holding on to it, I could say, this is yours. It doesn't ever become hers until she receives it. And so that's what Jesus is trying to say, that you've actually been given the ministry or an opportunity, first of all, that you're reconciled to Jesus once and for all. And then when you receive Jesus, you become that new creation. But then God goes one step farther and says, now it's your job to reproduce your recreated life in other people. Amen. Amen? Invite a friend to church. I had a co-worker on the phone just the other day. There's some things in his life that he's really having a hard go with. And I said, why don't you come on out? And yes, he didn't come today. But praise God, he's going to be here. Amen? Amen? And so you just got to simply just start talking about it. You know, sometimes we kind of we hide our candle or our light under a bush. Oh, no. <clears throat> don't do that. Let your light so shine. Let people know that the Jesus in you is able to meet any need that you have in your life. We shouldn't have to go through life sort of becoming this secret agent Christian. We should go through life being where we're proud to say we serve a living Jesus. We serve a big God. We serve a God that is more than enough because guess what? Jesus said, you've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Now, Pastor, how does reconciliation fit in the last days? Well, first of all, I want us to look at there's three things that have gone on. Number one, repentance comes in your life and you become a new creation. You've got to come to the knowledge that there are some things that, you know, have you ever had a friend that has meitis? You say, well, Pastor, what does that mean? It's never me. First of all, you've got to come to the reconciliation in your life or the recognized uh, fact in your life that there may be some things in your life that you could get reconciled to Jesus once and for all. <clears throat> that starts through, number one, repentance. Then the word says that after repentance, a time of refreshing will come. Isn't it wonderful to know that when you repent and make things right with God, that God doesn't keep poking you with a stick trying to say, well, you, you dirty old, you know, messed, messed up type person. I don't think I really want much to do with you. God says that times of refreshing will come when we enter into the house of God, but especially when we repent and let God begin to cleanse us with his mercy because he said reconciliation is for you. And so that's an opportunity that we have in Christ. So number one, repentance is God's number one plan for mankind. Who knows? The world needs it. 
Amen. We need it. We all need it. But then God says, I want to bring some refreshing in your life. How many could agree and say, well, you need some refreshing. Amen? Amen. Then it says, the restoration of all things. How many know that the restoration of all things means that once it's restored, then Jesus will come back? Well, good news. Jesus didn't come back last night. You're still here. You did not miss the rapture. Okay? I remember coming home as a kid, and you'd wonder when no one was home as if you missed the rapture. I know Hannah thought that one time. I think we actually hid, and she was really wondering what was going on. But I can remember as a child feeling like that. Good news is this. Jesus has not come back yet, and we are looking forward to it. But the Bible says that Jesus will come back, and first of all, there's repentance, and then there's res uh, res refreshing, and then there's restoration of all things, and then the return of the Lord. So if there's things in your life that need to be restored to you, you have a covenant right to believe God until Jesus comes. Now the good news is this, that gives you some time to get your loved ones saved. That gives you some time to get your boss saved. You say, well, pastor, I don't know if I want him saved. It's okay. The bottom line is, in Jesus, he's been reconciled to God. He simply needs to reach out and receive that free gift of salvation. So condemning him and making him feel like a worm is not the way to lead him to Jesus. It's simply talking and being honest and showing the love of Christ. The Bible says to be imitators of Christ. Amen? The guest speaker we saw last night, as I was feverishly writing notes all over the card and, and in different directions, and he said one of the things in being an imitator of Jesus Christ is you're going to have to step out, but you're also going to have to rewind the odd time. Because, you know, if you were to ever watch, you ever watch on TV, uh, I don't watch Jay Leno, but he mentioned last night about a, 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 a comedian that could perfectly... Uh, um, do an imitation of George Bush Sr. And he could hold his hand the right way, and he could talk just the right way, and, and he could sound just the right way. And obviously the only way he got really good in that, to be a good imitator of that uh, particular president, was to watch him, and to listen to him, and to focus on him, and to rewind and say, well, how did he hold his hand there, and how does he hold his mouth, and what are his expressions like, and what are his thoughts like, and before long, there would be people that would say, absolutely could maybe do a better impression than even the person himself. Jesus said we're to be imitators of Jesus. We're to be imitators of Christ. But it's important for us to get into the Word and find out what it says for us and let it begin to nourish you and give you that steady diet, something that causes some punch in your life and says God said it, therefore that settles it. Amen? Amen. Time to get back in the Word. You know, one of the things about even the church name last night, which I can't pronounce, but it means faith works. And you know what? We've been taught faith a long time, all over the years to the point that we almost say, well, I, I, I know it. But the bottom line is your faith works. Are you putting your faith to work? Are you finding areas of your life to say, let's add faith to this. Let's add faith to this. Today, when Al raised his hand, he added faith to his back. He said, I'm not going to sit here the whole day like this. I'm going to receive that, what was available. Just like that $20 bill being made available to somebody, or salvation being mailed, available to somebody, or healing being available to somebody. He took a step and said, I receive that as mine. Yeah. Today, I challenge you, what are you receiving as yours? Yeah. Before God can bring refreshing or restoration in your life, one of the setbacks is condemnation. I can't. I won't. I don't deserve it. Didn't the prodigal son struggle with that? Yeah. The Bible said the dad went out every day and looked for his son. And when he brought him home, he put a ring on his hand and a robe on his back. And he said, Fill the, kill the fatted calf, we're going to have a party. Because my son who was lost is now home. You may have been lost, but in Jesus you're home. Amen. You remember the other son got all bent out of shape because a good life lesson in this. He got all bent out of shape because he heard the party and the goings on. and He actually had everything available to him. A house and land and, 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 and good gifts and everything that he needed. But he got bent out of shape or he got offended. One of the greatest ways of stopping the blessing of God in your life. And he said, look at your wayward son. And he started to condemn him and go, he was this and he was that and he was this and he was that. And the father said, hey, all of these things are in the past, number one. Number two, everything that he has now has always been available to him and to you. But because of his offense, it was blocking the blessing that God had for the older brother. 
The younger brother, he was lost, but now he's found. I wonder those areas of our lives where we say, well, Pastor, maybe I've been lost in those areas, but now I find the Word of God, or I find a scripture that matches my problem, and I begin to say, that is mine. That's your first step towards seeing reconciliation or restoration in your life. First of all, is to acknowledge yourself. Because you see, self is what keeps us from the cross. When you receive Jesus Christ into your life and say, I'm surrendering self, I surrender all, I come just as I am, that's really where you've got to start. And when you begin to start at that place, God can then do an amazing miracle in your life, and God says, I'm going to bring you times of refreshing, I'm going to begin to restore all things back to your life, because God has now given us the ministry of reconciliation, because he's restored you. Amen? Amen? All right. So four things must take place. Go with me to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Verse 16. And it said, and this is talking about the lame man, okay? So Acts chapter 3, verse 16, it says, And his name, through faith in his name, has made the man strong, who you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance as you did your rulers. But those things that God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets, that Christ would suffer, and he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. So times of refreshing must come. They were all bent out of shape because this lame man got healed, and they said, oh, oh, oh how can he get this, and how can he get that? And Jesus, they, they began to explain what Jesus has done. But the bottom line to catch here is that times of refreshing must come before the coming of the Lord. 